I'll try and keep it short and sweet. But what I like to do here is um, put some devil's advocate into what's going on with the plastics in the country. Um, this is a nice, beautiful building that you'll see in Saramban, about one hour out of Kuala Lumpur. This is the Center of Excellence for Waste Management. Some of you would have been there. All of you are welcome to visit this place. It's the first Center of Excellence for waste management in the country and we would like it to expand throughout the region. Next. Hey, sorry, I'm supposed to do that, right? <laughs> I love that. Okay. So at least I know y'all are y'all are actually paying attention. Now, that's all the different landfills that we have in the country. Okay? And you can see the dots all over the place. We send um, about um, I think it's about 80% not goes to the landfills. Not important. This is important. How much of our waste, which is plastics? So if you see, on average, 35, um, roughly today, the number is about 35,000 tons generated every day. Out of that 35,000 tons, Plastics and diapers makes up 25% of that. One quarter of the waste that is thrown is plastics. Why am I barking about this? Ah, this one. How can anyone tell me how much of plastics is in the environment? I see some of you snapping photos. Oh, don't, don't snap my photo, huh? not nice. Your, your camera might crack. Just concentrate on what is here. This is just an extrapolation. Okay? It's an extrapolation of how much of plastics can go into the environment. Now, from... I, I, I Sorry, I came here in the afternoon. But I believe from morning to now, all of us are discussing about how to displace plastics from the environment. Now, from a man management perspective, okay, the little bit I know about management, sorry, I'm not a management person, I am a waste person, but from the management perspective, when you want to solve a problem, you first of all understand the problem. And for you to understand the problem, you must know how big the problem is. So all of us in this room is trying to solve a problem where we don't even have a freaking figure of what we want to solve. So what are we actually trying to solve? Okay, we take 10 kilos out of the environment. Did I touch 1%? Did I touch... 0.01%, what are we doing? We do not have any basic idea of what is in the environment. So what are we trying to solve? Any management will tell you, you are shooting bullets. If you go, if you, if you go to a shooting range, it's like, okay, I got, no, I got nowhere to target, but I just shoot somewhere. La. I'll hit something somewhere. Okay, now, most of it, there, 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 there are lots of these kind of pictures. This was taken off uh, Port Klang. And you can see, the boom is broken. Now, there is a lot of, um, I, I heard some quote, uh, quotes just now, Malaysia is the sixth biggest polluter and, and, and Southeast Asia is the biggest polluter and all of that. I, I, I seriously do not know how these numbers were obtained. Okay? And I do not know when it was obtained because if you ever imagine Southeast Asia sits in a tropical region. And in a tropical region, you get very, very heavy rains. One heavy rain and everything in the city gets washed out. It, clean, it basically is a cleaning system. It's, it's, a, it's a washing machine, you know. It just comes, cleans your whole city, puts everything into the river and sends it out. 
And believe me, you cannot clean that kind of volume because any gate, I know, thanks for the five minutes. I will, I'll make sure I do that. So any cleaning system just gets disrupted. You get one big log floating at 30, 40 kilometers an hour moving down uh, the river and everything that tries to stop it just gets broken through. So trying to strap the trap, all of that is not in not, not possible at all. This is another one. I like to show you all this picture. Look at this. 26 grams and 48 grams. Now, why do I show this picture? Now you know there's a problem. Now, when I want to recover, I'm doing business. I'm a businessman. Very simple. When I buy material, I buy material which is 48 grams. And I'm supposed to recycle and take the 26 grams, which is actually money for me. More than 50%, I cannot recycle. I get this material from the landfill. From the landfill, I got to transport it all the way to my factory. We throw away that 50% that, that, that of rubbish and then recover back and then try and make money. Just imagine. It doesn't make sense. So, yes, waste management needs to be looked at and how you can divert the plastics at source. Once it goes into the environment, it doesn't make sense to recycle because you basically are looking at at least an inc a double increase in the dirtiness of the plastic. Um, I just wanted to show this. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Ministries, okay, we all talk about plastics. One guy is want to recycle the plastic. The other guy is doing the waste management. I don't know. In, in Malaysia, it's like this. And I'm sure in a lot other countries, it's also like this. One guy is handling the waste management. The other guy wants to, uh, the other guy wants to take the plastic out of the industry. So how do you actually make two different departments talk to each other? I'll, that is basically about the waste management. I know I got only about two minutes. I'll do a very short intro on EPIC. EPIC was formed in, 2006, uh, formed in 2016. It's a center of excellence for waste management. And we look at all different types of waste. And we basically look into giving you insights on what the problem is and where we can go with it. Um, we do work with the Chartered Institute of Waste Managers UK. So it's not we blowing our own horns saying that we are very good. So there's someone else also saying that we are good. Um, now, and what we have done is we have done some, a lot of education, a lot of SEPA. We have done with people with Oman, with Kathmandu. We are coming up with competency-based programs. We are, we, are, we are trying to get the people educated. What do we do? Like I said, we do human capital, we do content, we do innovations, new products, new things. We even do a bit of green economy and of course the social awareness. And that is our huge 140 acre plan, which the center of excellence sits beside. So whenever you come and learn and you say, hey, what's an incinerator? You just look out the window, you actually see an incinerator by the side of it. I've never seen any such facility anywhere around the world. So this actually does that. When you say you want to see a landfill, you look outside the window, you see a landfill. You want to know how a op landfill operates? It's just by the side. So we, when we teach you, we take you there and we show you what happens. And I think now the future, we have got another 100 acres where we have put five acres of that land for the center of excellence and the other 95 acres we are open to anyone in the country who wants to do any kind of recycling, upcycling, as long as the business model makes sense, you are welcome to set up here. We are open for investments. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.